What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have a custom under counter shooter cabinet. Wait till you see the specs on this. And I couldn't do it alone. I got some help from a couple of good friends. Insane. <laughs> Alright guys, you know the drill, I'm broken record, but you're gonna always see this in the videos because there's some new people here that don't, they, they don't know the drill, they don't know it. And here we go. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? I have a link tree, link down below, it goes everywhere to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you would have followed it, you would have seen everything, the whole process on this specific cabinet from the ground up, just like all my other arcade cabinets, but this one, you would have seen everything, especially the whole trial and error. I'm gonna take you towards the end of this video. We're gonna go to the garage, I'm gonna package this. You're gonna see like the prototypes of this, all the cuts I did on this. There's a lot to discuss, especially with this specific custom arcade cabinet build. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently on this video than I normally do, I'm, I'm on the floor. I'm on my knees over here, so it's, it's gonna be a little bit different, okay? We're gonna basically start out with obviously talking about what is this, what's going on here. We're gonna actually then go into the system and some gameplay, and then towards the middle slash end of the video, I'm actually gonna take this entire setup here, I'm gonna bring it to my garage, we're gonna kinda dissect and talk about it piece by piece. There's really three pieces to this. We have the actual cabinet here itself, we have the guns and the pedals to talk about, and then we have the actual PC to discuss. So, doing things a little bit differently. Again, it's a very custom, unique situation, and I can't wait to explain everything. All right, guys, so before we go into full detail on what you see on the screen, because you're looking at me, I'm on my knees, there's pedals glowing, there's RGB, there's a big speaker on this cabinet, what is going on here? I did mention I needed some help from a couple of good friends, so I'm really proud of this three-person collaboration. You got me, Vic VP, Game Case, RKs, that built the custom under bar counter cabinet specifically to the customer's dimensions that he needed. I knew I needed some help because again, it was during Christmas time in December. He did want a shooter cab, so I thought to myself, let's get Joel over at Retro Lizard Custom Arcade to hook us up with a dedicated shooter PC. It was perfect timing too because he just upgraded his whole drive to output 4K. I was like, this is amazing. And the last person to help us out, and it's a very big key, is Ray over at RPEG Electronics. Gun for IR, the, the, the guns and the pedals on this, you are looking at real Time Crisis 3 modified guns with gun for IR, and we're looking at real Time Crisis metal foot pedals. Outrageous. So I'm gonna give you a quick backstory on the customer himself. He is in California. I got an email one day from a customer that says, hey Vic man, I need a custom cabinet. And I'm not talking about like what you normally build. I really need a custom cabinet. So we were going back and forth and basically he sent me a couple of drawings of what he needed. He's like, Vic, I don't need a 70 inch, you know, Neo Geo. I don't need a Kuna. I don't need a buy Vic cabinet. I need a cabinet that is gonna go underneath my bar counter. And this is awesome, because again, I do want to offer custom builds, and this right here is custom. So, really unique situation. Again, this is going to go underneath the counter. So right now, what you see on the screen, you might now understand what is going on with this kind of build. I don't have it bolted to the wall like it's supposed to, but I do plan to kind of give a look at that when we go to the garage. So, he did need a custom under counter, and the other big kind of constraint that we had he had some very specific dimensions for this. Now you might not see it there, but this right here is tight. You are looking at a 12 inch deep, that's the bottom here, 12 inches deep by 10 inches tall. That's basically how we had to come up with the dimensions. He told me, Vic, my bar that I have at home, it comes out 12 inches, there's a 12 inch counter. And I want to put this underneath. I don't want to go past 10 inches where like your feet and your stools are. So this right now is 10 inches down, 12 inches out, and then right here because of basic math, he actually said that. He's like, Vic, this is basic math. This face right here, that is 15 inches. 
Now, you might not really understand or like get what is going on. That is tight. And when I bring you to the garage and you're gonna see the underneath on this, there is no space to spare. It was insane. So once he hit me with the dimensions and I knew he wanted a shooter cabinet, I was like, we're gonna have to put like the PC somewhere else. Like it's not gonna fit in this cabinet. So he goes, no Vic, I know that he actually has, again, it's a bar, like it's a home bar. He has like, you know, liquor bottles. So think of like a bar and then like I'm the bartender. So in front of me is the bar counter and then this cabinet's gonna go in front of me. Behind him, he has, I believe a 42 inch TV on the wall. He sent me a picture, I might, I'm gonna flash it, I'll flash it real quick. He has a TV behind the wall and basically the idea is that the cabinet is gonna be in front. He's gonna drill a hole in front of him where he's gonna stand, there is cabinets there. He's gonna put the PC there and all the guts to it. So awesome, it's a very unique setup. Again, this is an under counter, under bar counter cabinet and luckily he has the space behind the wall. Big thing though is that he is gonna have to drill a hole through the wall to run wires. You do have about, uh, what is it, three or four. Uh, we got two USBs, we have the auxiliary, we have two power bricks to power the actual solenoids in the gun, and we have the speaker power. So there's six wires going through the rear of this cabin. Again, when I go to the garage, you're gonna see it. Just to explain to you like, the detail on this. Now you might be looking at this like, oh Vic, this probably took you like an hour. No, this no joke took me about two weeks. It took two weeks to build. Now you're gonna see when I go to the garage, I do actually have the prototype, like the first one I built, which I thought was good. But he was like, no Vic, it's gotta be a little bit bigger and it's gotta be deeper. And basically we then came to this. Again, custom is custom. This right here, this took time. Uh, you're gonna see also when I take upstairs all like the other test cuts. The other big thing is really the speaker on this. I'm gonna go into full detail on the speaker because the customer is very specific. He wanted bass. He was very, he wanted good sound on this cabinet. So what you really don't see is that this is actually a Bluetooth speaker that comes out. And cutting this, because this isn't a perfect circle, nothing is ever perfect, cutting this it took me a couple of tries on this. So upstairs I have a bunch of circle cuts and donuts I call them. So again, there's a lot to discuss on this build. Now going back to the customer when we were talking about little details and all that, he actually has a real Time Crisis 2 two-player cabinet in his house. That is a monster of a cabinet. So again, Time Crisis 2, two-player. So that's two screens, that's two pedals, that's two guns. So he knew what he wanted and he was actually looking at the jolts. And once he mentioned to me like, you know, I have real time crisis guns, he actually asked me, he's like, how's the kickback on the jolts? I said, honestly bro, hit up Ray. He does have more options because he could customize honestly almost every gun. Customer comes back to me, he goes, hey Vic, Ray just sold me real. Time Crisis 3 guns. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, what made him decide that? And he goes, that's because this gun has a 24 volt solenoid on it. If you don't know it, the Jolts have a 12 volt. This is a 24. That right there, that is a, that's a difference. <laughs> so we do have two real Time Crisis 3 light guns. Modified. You can even see how Ray RPEG Electronics, you can see the modification. What's also cool on this, he's got red and blue. He's got the 24 volts and off screen reload, it actually has a vibrate. Like a, like a phone vibrate. And I was like, whoa, there's so much going on. So you got the, you got the sliding recoil for the shot, but then off, you don't hear it, but you could feel an actual little rumble. It's like, whoa. There's so much going on. Then the customer took it to step up and actually got real. This is heavy. This is a real metal time crisis pedal. This is heavy. This is no joke and beautiful. Again, Ray, RPEG Electronics. Like I said, the customer knows his stuff, especially when somebody has a real time crisis two cabinet in his house. He didn't want no aim track. He was like, I'm not doing no aim track. You crazy. This is. This is what I, this is insane. It's, it's amazing what Ray did. 
And obviously, I don't know, again, Ray Arpeg Electronics gun for IR. So I'm going to talk about the actual setup. I'm going to bring you back. I'll tell you about what's going on here. Now we're going to real quick with Joel Retro Lizard. Awesome timing because when we messaged Joel, Joel just posted his video of how he took his gun drive. And I've used Joel's gun drive in the past. If you remember, I did the Time Crisis 32-inch Game Room Solutions cabinet. The customer actually purchased Joel's external hard drive. I did a whole video on it. And it's awesome because I think it's two years old, that video. And it's pretty cool to see also Joel took some of my feedback, such as he no longer is using like that external SSD, like a BS company one. He really upgraded. And this right here is prime example of upgrade. It's, it's awesome. So again, he posted a video on how all his light gun games now play in 4K. So I told the customer, I said, you know, I have my gun thing, but I've been kind of busy and I really, I didn't have time. I do also have a wait list on like my hyper spin builds and I do have a couple of shooter people on wait list. I was like, I can't really cut you in front. Like I don't do that. On my wait list, if you're number one, you're number one. I don't care how big or small the product is. I go down the list. That's just how I work. So I knew I needed Joel on this because again, he does this, he's banging them out, you go to his website, he's, he's banging these out. And again, the big thing that also caught my eyes was that he has every game playing in 4K. So I told the customer, I was like, you know what, man, it's a win-win. Joel also offers like upgrades, so you know, if a new game comes out, you could hit him up and he'll organize everything on his end. I don't want to talk for him, but that's how I understand it. He just now, uh, right now, time of, of shooting this video right now, yesterday, Tomb Raider just came out. Me and him were collaborating, we were talking, we were getting it all worked up, and he sent me his file, and now it is on this customer's PC. So, Joel, again, Retro Lizard is really good. I, I really recommend him, especially when it comes to the shooter cabinet stuff. Now again, once I saw the 4K, customer was like, Vic, you know what, cool. He was actually gonna upgrade his TV that he has at his bar. That TV was like, it runs 1080p, and before we all started, I did tell him like, hey, Joel's got this 4K, and he's like, Vic, my TV doesn't do 4K. And I think it was a 42 that he had. And I was like, you know, why not bump it up? Because he, he has room on that bar. Right? Why not bump it up to like a 55 inch 4K? So he's basically future proofed. But in the end, right now, this PC is actually set to 1080p. The customer is still, I believe, using the same TV. And that is outputting 1080p. But again, Joel Retro Lizard, when it's time for him to upgrade to 4K, Joel said that he'll always, you know, team viewer in and adjust the setting. So it's a win-win in this situation. Again, for me personally, I have a big kind of wait list, especially when it comes to the hyperspin build. I didn't, I, I, this is the only way it would work out on my end. So it's awesome stuff. Joel also helped us out. He gave me the iPad on this. Yes, in this right here, it is running an iPad. So we do have an iPad in this. I don't like iPads, but Joel always uses iPads and it works in this situation, it works perfectly. Joel, when it was time at night, he team viewed in. Uh, we needed some help as far as, you know, assigning a couple of the guns to a certain games, and he also helped me out as far as assigning the iPad. I wired the iPad, he then team viewed in and did the stuff, so it was cool. It was a perfect collaboration, I couldn't ask for anything better. Again, Ray Arpeg Electronics with the amazing guns that, again, luckily he is in, he's close to me, I don't wanna say where he's at. He's close to me, he's about maybe 10 miles out, so I was able to drive to him and pick up the guns and all that, and easy peasy. So last thing to mention about Joel, which I'm really happy with, because uh, it was funny, because he told me that this is his first M.2 SSD build, and he was like mind blown at how fast the games were launching, especially like Time Crisis 5. On this build, it launches Time Crisis 5 in seconds. And he was like mind blown by it. And I, I always say to my videos, you know, current gen PCs are where it's at. He's like me where he does offer like Dell Optiplexes and you know, cheaper options. But I'm really happy with this build because this right here is a fully custom. He built the PC himself. He even told me, he's like, Vic man, this is like the way to go. Like custom PC. I told him, bro, like, that's what it is. So this right now is running a Ryzen 5, 16 gigs of RAM with a 3070 in it. And he's got two terabyte M.2 SSD. That right there is a custom built PC. And Joel said to me, dude, like this is amazing. And also he's got the upgraded all-in-one cooler. Uh, because the customer is going to put this in a cabinet. Joel gave him the idea of, hey man, let's get this all-in-one cooler. So again, it's just 
when you see custom current gen PCs being used, it's a big advantage. You know, yes, it is a price to pay, but you know, the performance on this, it's, it's unreal. So now we're going to get into some gameplay video and all that. It was actually funny. You know, you look at this setup here and it's actually in the promo video. I'm doing a lot of bending. Like it, his setup is not really this low. It's just for demonstration purposes, I have to do it this way. I have it set up on a stool. Yes, you do see like wires going on here, but honestly, majority of these wires are behind the scenes, behind the wall. He really is only gonna have like the gun wires here and the, the wires to the pedal. So just keep that in mind, please. I know that I'm bending over and all that. So without further ado, because I mentioned Time Crisis 5, let's launch Time Crisis 5. Three, two, one, I'm gonna press start. Now, Time Crisis 5 is a one player game, but it does utilize the two foot pedal. So I don't want to go too far out, but you're going to see how fast this loads Time Crisis 5. And we're loaded. And Joel was mind blown. I'm mind blown. Again, that is dedicated to the M.2 SSD. Also, the graphics card does help as well. Graphics card, this is from my knowledge. This is what I understand. Graphics card help more in game. But as far as like launching, that's all based on the M.2 SSD. It's the same theory when you put Windows on an M.2 SSD or an SSD drive versus a regular hard disk drive. Awesome. He's got Time Crisis 5 with the attract mode. My personal image, it goes right into the game. There is no attract mode. This is just awesome to see. So on this demo right now, I'm going to actually play the game. I'm going to bump up though the speakers on this. This way you could, you know, hear how loud it is because the customer was really concerned about the sound on this. All right, so I turned off the lights in the basement just so you could see everything. I want to make sure you could see the left and right pedals. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to have the volume low first. This way you could hear the solenoid. Again, that 24 volt, he's got two 24 volt battery, uh, battery packs, power packs on the floor. And I do want to show off, as you can see the left, when I press the left, and the right when I press the right. So player two, the blue is the right, player one is red, that's the left. So it's just, it's awesome. So as you can see, if I press the left, it's gonna jump to the left. If I press the right, it's gonna jump to the right. Awesome, I mean, again, I posted this on Instagram, people are like, Vic, why are there two pedals? You need two pedals. It's like, yes, there are games that utilize two pedals. This right here, I can't skip this, so I'm gonna just cut. <laughs> All right, so like I said, I'm gonna just start this out with the volume low, so I'm gonna hit left. Gotta reload, obviously. Again, gun for IR tech is just accurate. That's all it is. So again, you can also see, I'm pretty close to the screen. I'm only close to the screen for the camera. I could bring this back. You do have a lot of wire here. So technically, I could also use the gun as like the, the pedal. But as you can see, it's, it's awesome. Again, it's far. Let's bump up now the sound. I'm gonna go max. I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna cut that out. So, as you can see though, he does have this Bluetooth speaker. This speaker is pricey, but the big thing was that it has bass. So, it's pretty cool because you can also detach the speaker, you could, you know, use it at the beach or whatever, but the subwoofer on this was the key thing and the reason why the customer bought this sound setup here. Not to mention I did suggest like the Z533, but as you can see with the cabinet design, there's not really much room and he also didn't want an external subwoofer. So the sound on this is amazing. He kept messaging me, he goes, hey Vic man, listen, be sure to have the power connected to the, to the speaker. If you have the power connected to the speaker, it is louder. If you leave it like on battery mode where it's no power to it, it's just battery operated, it cuts the sound in half. I don't know if you can tell in the audio on this, but 
it is loud. It's loud, and honestly, it's got bass to it. So for the customer in Cali, you don't need to worry about any of that. You probably gotta worry about the sound and the loudness of the solenoid, because that right there is just amazing stuff. It's, it's awesome. Now also note, I am running right now on a Bific 55 inch OLED. My TV right now is actually one of the upgrades, like I mentioned in the pinball video, one of the upgrades I did for Black Friday was I did get an OLED. So I right now though am outputting to 1080p. I am not in 4K, this right now is in 1080p. It is just, oh man, the, the sound on these guns. And you know, the price tag on it, you get that, man, you get that. Vic, can my $100 aim tracks do that? No. <laughs> these aren't aim tracks. Again, utilizing launch pads, as you can see, it's just a clean in and out. Amazing. So we're gonna launch another game that utilizes both pedals, and that is Too Spicy. And I realized that even with two pedals, I still suck at this game. Uh, so again, one gun on this, left pedal, right pedal. And this is a cool game. I definitely like this game because it's basically like you aim down, you gotta put the gun down to hide behind the wall. So it's definitely cool. But again, a big advantage and a very cool feature is the dual pedal on this. It's, it's awesome. So it's kind of cool. Like, I don't know how to play these. Like, do you lift your leg up? You know, like, do you keep both legs on? It should be probably like you're doing like a dance with one leg. It's a lot to take in. So I'm right now going to utilize my left. Let's see. So cool. If I stay down, I see him down. I'm not a good running gunner, but I'm going to step left. I think also if you double tap the pedal, it'll let you like jump. It does like a slow motion. So as you can see, I'm using the right pedal. I'm gonna go right. Oh great, crush, great, awesome. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That was a good combo right there. Go, go, go. Awesome. It's just it's it's awesome. This is this is cool. It just adds a different perspective when you are using two pedals. It's what a feeling. Oh, he's got one more shot. Come on, Vic. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, there you go. Awesome. On camera. Awesome. Sweet. Oh, man. I can't get enough of it. Um, again, he's got the categories on us. So that's under Techno Parrot. He also did add Patreon to this. So the big thing that Joel explained to me, I don't have Patreon personally. So you do have other games such as Aliens Armageddon, Terminator Salvation, and like two other games. But when it comes to Patreon, you actually have to connect it to your actual IP address. If I registered and signed up Patreon here or if Joel did it at his house and then sent it out to the customer, it wouldn't work. Um, so basically the customer is gonna message Joel when it's time for that. I do wanna watch Time Crisis, it's gonna be the last game to show off with the duel. I was shocked when I saw this, okay? He's got, PS2, this is Time Crisis 2 on the PlayStation 2. Split screen, two players, that means two guns work, and two pedals. I'm still mind blown by this. You have no idea, I am mind blown with this right here. So I'm gonna set it up, uh, I'm gonna set up, yeah, I don't have to cut the video. I'm just worried about my camera overheating, but let's rock. So we're gonna set up arcade, two player. I'm gonna do this one stage trial and stage one. Also note again, gun for IR, I have the four sensors on my screen, so the customer's gonna have to get up on a little stool and set that up. The other thing people don't understand is that you could utilize the TV's USB. Doesn't have to go to the, to the PC. The only thing is, I don't know how old the customer's TV is. I'm pretty sure it has a USB, but basically you set up your, your LEDs like that. Now as you can see, we are in split screen. I'm gonna grab the second gun, but right now I'm gonna just show off the pedal. So, Split screen, right? Player one, out. Player two, out. Amazing. So player one, we go kind of, kind of. Oh man. Now note though, and this is my opinion. 55 inch screen. This is beautiful with a 55 inch screen. 32 inch, I don't know. I don't know. But the other cool thing is this, right? If I take out player two and I fire player one, you can see there it doesn't register as player two. So let's do two players on this. Bring up player two. Oh man, clack, 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 clack. Let me do it too, like, now I'm gonna dance. 
Now I'm gonna have this awkward pedal thing going on. <laughs> and it's awesome. You can see there, player one, and you can see player two. It's awesome. What what a feeling. What a feeling. Exit out. Again, launch box. Launch box is launch box. People use it and I got my opinions, I like my hyper swim, but launch box, it's cool, it works. The last game I'll launch real quick, two player is Tomb Raider. So again, I don't know if you can see it on the screen because it's kind of difficult to record a screen. I was actually gonna pull up the party cave. When I was gonna make this video, I was gonna do party cave versus my OLED. Um, my idea actually was to do it with 4K, but it's not outputting to 4K. But all in all, A-OK, -okay, let's check out the new release, Tomb Raider. Man, and we're gonna do two player on this. This, does, this game doesn't utilize the foot pedal. So you could do off screen reload and going back to this gun here, it's got this rumble feature. Off screen reload, it's like, how do I explain it? It's almost like an Xbox 360 controller, not a three, like an Xbox One controller or your console controller when it vibrates. It's a very subtle vibrate. So now also remember when it comes to the speaker here, you know, there's gonna be a counter here. So really, Customer is gonna go down here to adjust. The speaker, the volume controls are on the top. I did mention to him, do you wanna spin the speaker but then the logo is upside down? And he didn't wanna do that. So it's gonna work out, it's awesome. As you can see, again, Tomb Raider, standalone, not utilizing Techno Parrot. This is a standalone game, off-screen reload. So again, off-screen reload, and every time I go off-screen, it gives that subtle rumble. I can't visually show it to you, but it's got a nice rumble to it. And you can also press the side button here to reload as well. We'll bring in player two. So again, two player. Again, also note, I'm close to this TV. My arcade control panel is three feet away from the TV. I'm right now probably five feet. And also keep in mind the customer is gonna be farther because the TV is by the bar, so. Awesome, and, and again, I could go back. If I wanted to go back on these, I got the two here. These come with like seven foot cords. Man, you hear that clap? Unreal. Awesome. I mean, me personally, I don't like to hold down the trigger, but games like Terminator 2, that clack is loud. It is a loud. <laughs> Customer wanted real-time prices, you damn right he got it. I love it, look at this, the gun holster is there. Oh man, what a unique build. This right here is what I'm personally anxious to see. This is now PS3 emulation. Again, rocking the 37, this is Time Crisis Raising Storm. Apparently, Joel and RPEG Electronics collaborated together on this and they, they haven't actually skipped, wow. It skipped the calibration screen. It skipped like the main menu and it went right into the game. Oh, that's awesome. That is, that's awesome. Uh, mine personally, it goes with like a calibration screen. That is awesome to see. Uh, this cutscene, you can't skip it, unfortunately. Um, I, have, I haven't launched this yet, so let's see how it goes. I'm not sure if it's gonna work with the pedal. Maybe it will, I'm not sure, but we'll see. All right, so I got game loaded up. Found the volume a little. Let's see. Oh, the pedal works. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, and I can hold it down. That is awesome. Awesome stuff right there. Amazing. That is beautiful right there. Now, one big note that I do want to explain, because some people do get confused, not all the systems can do two players. Maybe in the future they can with an update, such as how PlayStation 2 got updated. But right now, for example, we have Raising Storm PS3. I can bring in Player 2. Player 2 is actually mimicking Player 1. So just got to keep that in mind. Not all the games, and there's over 200 games on this. Again, last night, um, I personally added Tomb Raider along with Joel. Uh, the reason why I'm not showing Launchbox too much is because we're missing artwork on that. But I'll fix that before it goes out because Joel told me I just gotta connect to the internet. Right now the PC is not connected to the internet. 
but it is awesome to see PlayStation 3 with that quick cut. That is awesome. Uh, all in all, Launchbox, pretty cool. Again, it's awesome stuff. Some games you might have to just refocus. You might have just clicked the trigger and then it brings back the focus. But all in all, awesome stuff. Just want to show you, for example, like Tomb Raider, as you can see, I don't have this connected to the internet. Joel said, hey Vic, I'll show you how to get the media. I will do that before the, the PC goes out. But he added a lot of games to it. Again, for example, like Wartran Troopers, uh, Aliens Armageddon. This game right now is Patreon. If I try to launch it, it's going to give me an error. Again, once the customer gets this PC in the mail, as you can see, I have an error. Program will be terminated. Awesome. Once the customer gets this, he'll, uh, he'll figure it out. And as you can see, like, that's kind of the hard stuff. Like, I have now this error, so I'm going to like press OK. I'll hopefully regain focus back to Launchbox. Yeah, I do. Awesome. One last thing that I personally want to see is apparently he's got the House of the Dead remake. And it's got like... It's like in arcade mode where it skips the entire like selection screen. Um, I'm, I'm, I haven't launched this, so I'm excited to see this. Uh, wow. It says press start for free. So I guess start. Oh, wow. Wow, so it's, let's see. Wow. <laughs> so it bypassed the, what? No way. It bypassed the entire intro screen. Can I reload with the pedal? No. I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that in the AHK file. But this game is really off screen reload. If I press start on player two, what? Wow, that is cool. All screen reload, wow. My only thing, and this is the only thing about House of the Dead Remake is, um, like on mine, it's more about if you're able to switch the weapon. Cause you right now start out with a handgun. Wow. It was a good idea to go with Joel on this one. Wow, I got a lot of researching to do. <laughs> awesome, again, Awesome stuff. Let's now, I'm gonna take this apart now. That's really it. I, I have nothing else to really say. It's it's jam-packed. There's a lot of stuff. He's got PlayStation 1. He's got time, he's got every time crisis. And he's got a nice little category section. So he's got all the House of Dead and all the time crisis. All the Virtua Cops. Cool, yeah. Very nice. It's a cool interface. You know, me, like I said, I have, I like my hyperspin. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's ways to do different themes, but this is cool. I actually want to, this isn't, I want to, I want to just, I picked the wrong system. I actually want to just do this for my pleasure because it's my turn to have fun. I want to do duck hunt. <laughs> I want to use duck hunt utilizing the time crisis three gun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this works. The zapper. As a <laughs> awesome. That is beautiful stuff. So again, inside of this, that's running retro arc. You just have to double tap the exit on it. Awesome. The focus is good. It's going in and out. This is awesome. Nothing to, to there's nothing to say about this. It's it's beautiful stuff. Good job. Again, shout out to Joel, Retro Lizard, Custom Arcades. Hit him up for the whole PC, and trust me, you're gonna want the current gen PC. I don't see an Optiplex running this. <laughs> it'll run, it'll run Duck Hunt, but I don't know if it's gonna run like that speediness of a PS3 emulation, or especially that Time Crisis 5. Again, shout out Ray. RPEG Electronics, these guns, man, these guns are, are beautiful. That rumble, how can I, how can, no, you can't, I'm trying to like get it to vibrate and like, that rumble is very unique, it's, it's cool. Awesome, all right, we're right now gonna shut down the PC, we're gonna take everything upstairs and we'll just do a quick, I'm actually doing photos for Ray and Retro Lizard so he can, you know, post them on his website and 
let's go. Let's move upstairs. Real quick, actually, before I bring it upstairs, we're gonna do a quick tutorial for the customer. Uh, I shut down. I'm gonna repower on. I don't have it set right now. I'm gonna take this PC to the internet and download the media. Um, but I'm gonna ask the customer if he wants LaunchBox to launch automatically, like how I have Hyperspin set up. So I'm gonna do that for him. The real big thing I do wanna to explain to the customer is that any customer, this happens every time. Every time like you connect a new display to your PC, it's gonna change the display settings. So big thing basically is that once you get it, and Joel provided this very nice Logitech with like this touchpad mouse, it's pretty cool. Anytime you get a PC, you're gonna right click on the desktop, you're gonna to go to display settings and left click. And you're gonna change your resolution. In this situation, he has 1080p. You're gonna switch it to 1080p and you're gonna basically wanna make sure that you're under the change the size of text to 100%. Uh, so a big thing, like for example, this customer is gonna get it and it's gonna launch big box, like, cause I'm gonna have it set to 30 seconds. So you're gonna have to exit out big box and such. Uh, I didn't touch anything here. Me personally, I did not do any modifications to any files. I didn't do anything because, you know, it's Joel's drive, so any hiccups, I didn't want to be responsible, and he's gonna say, hey, Vic, Vic touched something. I, didn't, I don't want to be responsible for that. So, uh, all in all, awesome stuff. Basically, even in Big Box, let's just pretend that, you know, Big Box launches, he gains on. Uh, as far as, like, the USB connections, uh, you're gonna put the, the connections in the rear. I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a picture up real quick. Don't use the top front PC case. Um, it's just better to do it directly to the motherboard to avoid any interference or a disconnect. So uh, right now, for example, let's say we're gonna shut down. So you're in big box. All you really gotta do is press the power button to the PC uh, and you're good. That's all it is. Uh, this right now is running an Asus motherboard, again, Ryzen 5. Uh, I actually had to do a setting in the BIOS because when the PC turned off, there was still power to the USBs. So the, the, the pedals were still like lit up and everything was lit up. So now when the PC shuts down, it's gonna power down entirely. So it's pretty cool to see a Ryzen 5. As you can see, it's all powered down. Pretty cool to see Ryzen 5. I'm an Intel kind of guy, but it works. It's cool. Awesome. So like I said, a little downside because again, Big Boss is gonna automatically launch. Customer has to do a couple of things on his end. Again, we have to set up the display. Uh, so again, just keep in mind that the big box is going to launch, so you got to exit out. So you can't really just go right into it. It's for this, it's really for every customer, if you really think about it, just to set up. So again, we have to change the display, but also there is a program on the desktop that I put. This is the Gun for IR uh, programming. You don't want to touch anything here besides on the right side is a button that says test screen. You're going to run this test screen. It's great to do this because when you put your infrared lights on, you're gonna put them in the correct placement. In my situation, yes, you're looking at this like, Vic, what? This is the actual customer's LEDs. This is, this is not mine. I don't have a pair of these because I don't have gun for IR, I have cheap aim tracks. So these are the actual customer's infrareds here. I basically just kind of quickly put them up, but uh, Ray Supply is very strong adhesive. Basically, you're gonna wanna launch the screen and then you're gonna wanna put the actual infrared where the dot is. Boom, that's what's great about this test screen is because your dot is gonna line up right there. So same thing with the top, bottom, left, and right. Once you're done, just escape out and then exit the program. Don't touch anything in that program. I never looked there. You just wanna do the test screen so you know exactly where to put the infrared LEDs. And yes, I'm gonna shut down again. <laughs> but yes, there you guys have it. That is the basic tutorial. Uh, when we go upstairs, I'm going to explain the USB connections here and all that. Because like I said, there is two USBs. Going to the PC right now is the power plug, HDMI cable, two USBs, and the auxiliary wire for the speaker. But if you look very, very, very carefully, there's actually two, four, five, there's actually six USB connections going somewhere. <laughs> let's go, let's bring it upstairs. Talk about proof of concept. Check this out. I, this is jerry rigged, yes. Um, I don't wanna cut a piece of wood and mat. This is just like, just to show you what this is supposed to look like, right? This is awesome, because also the customer is kind of worried about like, hey Vic, is this gonna like fall apart? So check it out. I have my folding table. As you can see, yes, it is crooked. So yes, the cabinet is crooked. It, roll with me here, check it out. The back here, 
That is actually cardboard. It's the same cardboard you find that actually came from my 55 inch TV box that protects the screen. This right now is being held up by cardboard. In the back it is utilizing three butterflies or toggle bolts. So this is cool. The customer is really worried about like, hey Vic, is this gonna like fall apart? And as you can see, this right now is being held up by two toggle bolts and a cardboard backing. Granted, the big thing that, you know, people are gonna look at this, you're gonna see wires. Um, you know, he might be able to take this, maybe make like a, a hook or something like that on the side. Again, I don't really know the total situation, uh, but this is almost what it's gonna look like. You can see like the gun holsters are right, right at the edge of it. Again, granted, it, the, the table's tilted, but that's, this is what it's supposed to be. Remember when I went in the video and I was talking about like the audio to the speaker, it's just like that. It's not too bad. Again, I right now is about, I'm about like three inches down from the top edge because it's a folding table, I can't get to the edge. So granted, yes, like you're gonna be going under the table to raise and lower the volume um, as far as the speaker itself. You can do a couple of things in that instance. You could keep this at max volume and then utilize the keyboard and raise the volume up and down in Windows, but to each their own. It's just, it's just cool to see this. You can see there also like the foot pedals. You know, the wires for the foot pedals kind of tuck away. Then when it's time to play, you pull them out. It's just awesome. You can't really see here, but the biggest thing is that there's no, you know, arcade wires, there's no arcade button wire hanging. It is clean and it is tight. That is, that is awesome. I, I, I love how it is. And it's gonna be just like this. Behind the cardboard is the PC. Let's take you over there real quick. And yes, this is behind the scenes. This is technically his bar. Like I said, he has a counter, he has a cabinet here. This is gonna be underneath the cabinet. And granted, yes, there are wires. No matter what you do, there's gonna be wires. You can see we have three power banks. Two of them are the 24 volt uh, for the powering of the solenoid of the gun. So two of them are for the guns. And one of them goes to the speaker uh, power. Then you have your three gray wires. This, these two USB extenders, he may not need to actually use. Um, I actually, you know, I am, I am using them. I am using them now, but if he puts a PC right against the wall, those four to one hubs, the USB hubs, they might be long enough to just be plugged in directly to the PC. So I have two USB extenders and we have the auxiliary wire. This is for the speaker, you know, the, the audio going to the speaker. Uh, and then you have the PC power supply. So as you can see here, you do need four outlets in this situation. So it's just kind of cool. I did this real quick because I wanted to show like proof of concept. This way in case people don't understand the cabinet design, that's what it is. All right, so right now I just turned off the computer. I don't have a screen, obviously. I just turned it on just this way you can kind of see the LED lights and all that. Uh, Awesome stuff. He isn't too sure about the LED buttons, so you can always remove the USB. It is powered via USB. Uh, we also didn't do any underglow whatsoever. He didn't want that, so it's pretty cool. I'm basically now gonna dissect this cabinet. I'm gonna take it off, and I wanna show you, you know, up close and personal the cabinet itself. So basically, the customer would do this to put it back in reverse. The biggest thing is the speaker. That is actually the last thing, or I should say really the light guns. The light guns are, no. No, the speaker is the last thing. The light, go with me. So the speaker is gonna be the last thing you have to put on. So basically you pull the speaker out. There are two cables going to the speaker. Again, you have your power and your auxiliary. There is slack. So, you know, you don't have to worry about it. That's also why I did recommend like extenders. This way you're not like filling with it and all that. So let me put the speaker down. Next thing definitely, we're gonna take out the guns and we're gonna take out the pedals. So. You might be able to, I'm pretty sure you can see it there. Straight ahead, right into the cabinet here, I have this four to one USB hub. I'm gonna be able to do it from underneath. I'm gonna just disconnect the pedals. This way we can get rid of the pedals. We don't have to worry about the pedals getting out of the way or in the way and such. Pedals are gone, now we're gonna work on the guns. Looking at the cabinet on the top left, I have another four to one USB hub. And the top two wires are going to the guns. Those are the only USBs also that have the barrel connector for the power supply. So let's get rid of the guns. Nice and easy, we don't wanna pull wires, just be sure you're doing a clean drop. We got one gun in our hand, and we got two. I don't like putting stuff on the floor, especially for my garage. So let me put these nice and neat. And now I'm gonna basically just push back into the wall. Uh, again, he would do this in reverse, like he would push from the cabinet to the front. I'm just gonna get rid of these wires, which are the auxiliary wire, and the power wire going to the speaker and the power wires going to the light guns themselves. Uh, I did push in though 
the two USB connections, I didn't disconnect the extender in the back, I'll do it from here, because it did come through the hole. So I'm gonna take now my four to one USB hubs, boom. Now I basically have no wires in the wall or interfering, these two wires are just with the cabinet. Now the only big thing with this situation is you're gonna need a tiny screwdriver, you're gonna need one of these small ones. Again, I'm using, I call them butterflies, it was funny, I was in Home Depot and the guy's like, what are butterflies? Even the customer, he's like, what are butterflies? And I was like, oh, um, they're also known as like alligator clamps. And they're like, Home Depot's like, what the f what is an alligator clamp? These are toggle bolts. That is the correct term there. So essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm, gonna, I'm taking this off. So technically the toggle bolt is going to fall behind the wall. But in his situation, it's not. The only big thing is you do need a small screwdriver or, you know, if you have like the angle bit on a drill, you could easily do it. I wouldn't really put a drill to this, to be honest with you. I would take a very small screwdriver and just slowly go that way. Again, three toggle bolts, but I only have two. I didn't even put the middle in. And as you can see, it was supporting it. Let me take these screws out and we're going to bring it up top here. And now, bing, bang, boom. We have an under counter cabinet in our hands. And again, the customer was worried about it falling apart. This thing is built like a tank. And then going nowhere. <laughs> I love it, man, I love it. So check out the back. That's what he's gonna see, essentially. You're gonna have these, these are what's known as toggle bolts. So basically, you make a big enough hole, you push in, and then they open, and then you start drilling. So I did put three inch screws on this. Um, I don't know, I don't know his walls. You know, I've seen people have half inch walls. I've seen people have uh, two, uh, one inch. I don't know, I'm not a contractor. So the big thing is, though, keep in mind, the piece of wood itself is three quarter inch. So you might be saying, oh, thank you, you could probably do like an inch. No, you can't. Like you, you, or you could maybe do two inches. I don't know what's behind this wall. So again, I'm gonna give him three, three inch toggles. And inside, as you can see, I obviously have the washer uh, in there. So it's a-okay, no need to worry about it. I am not gonna send this to him with the toggle bolts in, because I don't want it to puncture the packaging and all that. I'll give him the washers and such so it is pretty cool uh just take a look at the rear like i said you have the three holes for the toggle bolts and then i put two holes here because again i don't know if he has beams that's kind of the hard thing about this project we don't know where beams are i don't know where it is so in case he hits a beam on this side he could at least you know put a hole here and one hole is plenty enough to put all those wires in like i did in that demonstration uh you know you could do two but there's no need to put two as far as, like I said, making the mark on where to go, there's two ways you could go about it. It's really gonna be a two-man job. You're definitely gonna have somebody that's gonna hold it where you want it to go. Um, let me go grab real quick my screwdriver. So now one way you can do it is like the painter's trick way, painter's tape way, where you take the blue painter's tape, you line it across, and then you kind of like puncture the hole. This is tough in this situation, because again, you gotta figure it out. My way is really just getting a small screwdriver. And basically, once you mount it, you're gonna put the screwdriver in the hole and poof, just kind of make a marking on the wall. Um, if you look carefully, the hole here for the screw, I did it this tight. It's not a big hole like this. This way, the toggle bolt stays in position. If I made a big hole, then like the, the, the screw's gonna be all floppy and you're not gonna get in the, it's, you won't get in the hole, that's what she said. Um, so you can't really make this hole bigger. It's more about you know utilizing a small screwdriver, something small and skinny. Um, I was gonna make the hole bigger for like to put a pencil in, but once you start getting like a floppy screw, it's it's a nightmare. You're gonna it's it's awful. You don't want to deal with that. And then when it comes to like the hole here, you just take a pen and you kind of just mark your hole. This right here is a an inch and like an inch and like a quarter. So you can do with that. You don't need the whole hole, but. It is kind of helpful, especially if you have to put the USBs, um, USB extenders through them. All right, now I'm going to take you in close. So let's take a closer look at the cabinet itself. So again, these two, U these two wires here are going to the USB hubs. You can see the one USB hub right here. That's meant for the pedals. Yes, there are four USBs there. For the customer, you could put them anywhere you want. But I usually put them on the, on the, on the left. It doesn't really matter. I did player one and player two. It doesn't matter. But yes, you have four USBs, you only need really two. But just kind of looking at like the design of the cabinet, right? The one thing you might notice right now is that the actual cabinet is levitating. That is because it is sitting on the gun holsters. Now, it's not a big deal, 
you know, it did now technically make this 11 inches deeper, but it's more towards the rear of the cabinet. Uh, the customer and I, we basically said, you know what, and through the customer, the customer said, Vic, I have those time crisis guns. I was really going to do the party cade route where it was just going to be a hole and the gun kind of sits, but it kind of has the risk of falling. So he didn't really like that. I said, you know what, let's get these gun holsters. So Ray, our peg electronics gave us the gun holsters. He didn't give it to us. He charged me for it and such. So we do have the two gun holsters. And again, as you can see, it's tight. This space here, there it's tight. There is no room for error and there's no room for anything else. It is that tight. So again, go, gun holsters, granted, they, they have to come down there. It's nothing bad, but the advantage is that it's the rear. So even if he has a stool, it's not going to come anywhere near the gun holster. So it worked out. As you can see on the bottom though, it said clean wiring as always. You got the RK buttons. I actually used from the other project with Time Crisis, I used Ray's like wire loom thing here. And I basically put the wires nice and I tucked it away. So you can see it there. You can see on the bottom right there, you have the iPack. That is an iPack 2 clean and tight wiring as always. I'm pretty sure you can see that. And on the opposite side here is another four to one USB hub. This hub here has one USB for the LEDs of the button. The other one is going to the iPad and then there's two up top for the light gun. So the light guns do get connected here. It's just, like I said, there's no room for error. Me personally, I wanted to put a bottom. I wanted to close the cabinet, but the customer actually said, no, let's not close it. And actually is an advantage to the speaker the speaker now has more air and more air means more bass. So awesome. It's, it's awesome stuff. It's amazing. Honestly. Now our work on this was pretty plain. We were actually going to look at a John Wick design, but then once it came time for the speaker, as you can see, the speaker takes a good half of the cabinet. So we basically went with an Amazon carbon fiber, uh, vinyl to it. Black, very nice stuff. Very easy. So on the face and on the sides there as well. And as you can see, I'm holding it from the rear, not going anywhere, clean vinyl as always. And I did the black T molding. So we have black T molding along the edges here, but not on the rear. I can't put T molding here because then it brings the cabinet out by a couple of millimeters. So we did no T molding in the bag. This way it's flush against the wall and also notice the T molding here for the gun holster, just little details. I even did a T molding cut. For the actual speaker, if you followed me on Instagram, you saw my story, you would have seen that T molding. The big thing though with that speaker is that when I added the T molding, the speaker actually fell. So now I got the speaker right, and if you look very carefully, the entire cabinet design, it revolves around this speaker. Um, it, it, everything has to go around this speaker. This speaker has like legs. You can't, you probably could take these legs off, but I wasn't going to risk it. This speaker has a, a, a price tag on it. Big thing again, it does have this logo there. So it's like, you know, you want to spin it to make sure that it's straight and all that. That was the main reason why the volume controls are on the top. The volume controls could be span if you flipped it, but the logo is upside down. You can't change anything about it. But the big thing is, as you can see, that speaker ain't going nowhere. And the amount of test cuts and trial cuts that I did for it to work, man, you have no idea. I'm going to show you the panels. Obviously my luck, this speaker is not a perfect circle. You kind of see like, it's like a spaceship. It's like a UFO and it's not a perfect circle. It's more of like an oval shape. So, so many test cuts went into this and as you can see, it just, boop, it just drops in. It's, it's awesome. It's just great to see it. Now what's unique about the cabinet. I never do this really on my arcade builds, but I actually have four screws on the face of this cavity. You might see it. There's one, two, three, and four right here. So basically again, I put the screw in and then I covered it with the vinyl. I never do that on faces because as you can see, it kind of makes a little bit of like a, an indent. But in this situation, I had to do it. That's really the only way that this face is being held in. Now the customer was also concerned about structure and I said to him, the actual structure is being held together by the side panels. So I have wood panels stapled to the side and then screws go directly into it. What's also cool with these two top pieces, specifically those two screws, they actually go so deep that it actually connects and contacts with the rear panel here. So you basically have a screw going through the side and then into this a little bit. So it works out. I'm not too, like he shouldn't have to worry about structure that 
That's not going nowhere. <laughs> so I said this kind of really revolves around this speaker. And the big thing, and I've been, I've been dying for this part of the video because I can finally throw them out. The big thing is that this speaker, obviously my luck, it's not a perfect circle. It's actually like a UFO. It's like, it looks like a spaceship, right? And it's like an, a little bit of an, on the oval side. Obviously it's not a perfect circle. What does that mean? There has been so many test cuts. I have circles on, cir there's two panels here. I have circles on circles on circles. I have more circles behind you. I have more donuts than Dunkin' Donuts over here. There was so many practice cuts just to make this fit correctly. It's just, it, there's so many. I, I've been waiting for this video because I keep, I keep like kicking these donuts. You want a coaster? You want a donut? I keep kicking these across the room. I've been dying for this video. <laughs> So now what am I getting at? Basically what I'm trying to say is that when you want custom, I'm down to do it. I do say in my videos, my CNC is not 100% perfect. You know, there are test cuts. That's also why I do need the actual physical hardware in my hand. My luck, right? This is not a perfect circle. It's an oval. Uh, the dimensions on the website didn't match exactly. The first hole I did, the speaker was a little bit levitating too much. It didn't like sit good, as you saw now. The second hole I made, the speaker fell through. There's a lot of stuff going on. It, it, there's a lot. There's a lot of cutting. There's a lot of planning to it. I get annoyed when somebody thinks that that took like two hours to make. In reality, this took two weeks with the test cutting and all that. And I'm lucky that I had all the spare wood aside. But granted, keep in mind, I still have to pay the electricity to make those test cuts. So what am I getting at? This right here, it took a four by eight sheet of wood to get to this point. Oh, Vic. That's not four by eight. That's not a four foot. It is technically like all the test cuts, as you can see, it adds up to a four by eight sheet of wood. This right here is 20 inches wide, 12 inches deep, 10 inches tall. And again, customer needed that specifically. This is actually an eighth of an inch under 20. He was like, Vic, my max is 20, 12, 10. Don't go past it. I was like, all right, cool. We're going to go in and out. Awesome. So now I said in the beginning of the video, this right here actually, was the first rendition. This was the first one I mocked up. Uh, and as you can see, it's way different. But that was the first one. It, you know, it's awesome. That's where like customers, they message me back and forth and he wanted like, his design actually comes out to be better, definitely. Um, it was better because the face panel is 15 inches. Whereas like this here, this right here was 10 because of his dimension that he needed. So it's just pretty cool. As you can see, like this was the first part and this is building like a tank. This is heavy. Damn, <laughs> this is heavy right there. It's just, you can see like there's not much space. You know, I sent him a picture of this and then we got into the whole speaker setup with the sub and where we're gonna put the speakers and I need bass. So this one basically, got, I was gonna get ready to put the, the arcade buttons. This design would have been better for artwork. You know, we could have definitely put some vinyl on this cause I have, no gaping hole, but as you can see, it's just test cuts. You know, people want custom. I'm down to do custom all day. It's just, it's awesome to see that final product. All right guys, well there you guys have it. The under bar counter shooter cabinet. This is going out to California. I'm gonna definitely bubble wrap it. I got a lot of wrap to do. It's gonna go out tomorrow. Uh, I do have an extra PC box. I'm probably gonna, I gotta make a box for this. Um, but all in all, there you guys have it. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades, shout out to Ray, Arpeg Electronics, shout out to Joel, Retro Lizard. This is gonna be another amazing cabinet going out for somebody to enjoy some arcade gaming. Woo!